Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keeping it free, .blogspot.com. I'm an attorney in Northern California, civil attorney, not a criminal attorney. And from time to time, I post some thoughts on some criminal cases in the news here online, right? Occasionally, I'll post a family law video as well. I was watching Unspeakable Crime, the first episode, concerning the death of Jessica Chambers. And it struck me. Now, this video is not intended to go into that crime. It's intended to look a little bit more closely at the dynamic playing out on television. Right in the first episode, at the end of the first episode, after they introduce you to the murder victim, as well as the murder victim's friends and family, they show you what's coming in future episodes. So the individual accused of doing the crime, Quentin Tellis, they show members of his family Right, and they are strenuously claiming on camera that the empathetic young man they know could never have done a horrific murder like this. And for those who don't know, Jessica Chambers is burned to death. When the paramedics show up on the scene, she's dying. She then says to them, Eric or Derek did it, right? It's either an Eric or a Derek, right? She is so badly burnt that she can't even say the individual's last name, right? The TELUS defense team has used this evidence to say, look, she didn't say Quentin. She said someone else's name, right? She would know who her murderer was. There's no evidence that Quentin Tellis ever went by the names of Eric or Derek, right? That's the defense. The prosecution is gonna make the argument that she's so badly burned her tongue is so badly burned that she may not have been able to properly pronounce the name she intended to say. But let me just say this, and I want folks to look carefully at this series because the murder case involves more than just the victim and the accused. It actually involves us the community, right? How we interact with each other, how we assume other people are behaving, how we make assumptions on who other people are. Now, to me, that's even more fascinating than that crime. Let me explain. Here online from time to time, I'll make a video of a horrific crime. Horrific, right? And in the comment section to the video, someone will identify themselves as a neighbor of the accused. Sometimes it's a family member. Sometimes it's an acquaintance. Sometimes the person knows the accused through some association. Maybe it's a parent-teacher's association. Maybe it's uh, they both have kids in the Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or something of that nature. Maybe they go to church with the accused. And the person will almost always say, you know what? I knew I'll throw out a name of someone accused of a terrible crime, accused and convicted, Darley Rotier. Right, accused of killing her own kids. Right, the person will say, you know, I knew Darley. And the Darley I knew could never do what she's accused of doing. 
Well, let me just say this clearly here in this video, because I believe as you look at this Jessica Chambers case, as fuzzy as the view looks right now, what's going to be clear over time? is that the guy accused of the murder in this case, in my opinion, and I'm not a medical doctor, this is just an opinion video, is a psychopath. Now, just understand, psychopaths are great at playing roles. They study roles. It's all a movie for them. Right? They just want the starring role of being the person who is victimizing the neighborhood. Right? But make no mistake, with psychopaths, appearances are deceiving. You simply cannot tell that they view people as objects. That in actuality, no matter how sympathetic they are, come across. In actuality, they lack empathy. You can't tell that at first glance. I'm not sure if you can tell that at a PTA meeting or sitting a few pews over in church. So Ted Bundy, let's just name some of the worst killers in history, right? Certainly recent history. Ted Bundy, you know, he has a girlfriend for many of the murders, right? He has an ongoing relationship. His girlfriend's serious about him. Even after he's in prison, did you know that Bundy gets, well, I'll just say this, Bundy becomes a father. I believe he gets married. The woman who he marries then leaves him later, right? When Bundy starts toward the end of his life, confessing to his depravity, confessing to the murders he's committed, the murders he's denied committing until he's so close to getting executed that he then starts offering to tell the authorities where the bodies can be found. Did you know that Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, convinced three different women to marry him? Right, Ridgway, how do I put this? Ridgway has a side of him that made him look like husband material to multiple women. He's married three times. Understand he's married during some of these murders. He would be at home with his wife, he would then leave then he would go kill people and come back home to his marital bed. Their TV shows where they interview the woman who was his wife, right? Dennis Rader, BTK. Did you know that Dennis Rader was married over 20 years? Right? There are many people in the community who saw Dennis Rader on a regular basis, who thought he was a model citizen, who had absolutely no idea. This is wild. Serial murders, murders with the same MO are happening all over the community. This is wild. Dennis Rader is writing the press, contacting the press, calling himself BTK, right? Bind, torture, kill. There were people who thought Dennis Rader was a model neighbor. Now let's talk about Quentin Tellis. 
because you're going to hear as this case unfolds on the television series that Tellus was good friends with the murder victim. That Tellus is trying to sweet talk her through texts into getting busy with him, getting intimate with him. Right? Tellus sounds conversational in the text. He says, hey, baby, I need some loving. Right? You're going to think that this is just a Lothario lusting after a friend. Right? What I want people to do is to think about the other case. Folks, there's another case where Tellus is accused of murder. Right? Understand, Jessica Chambers isn't the only alleged murder victim of Quentin Tellis. Quite frankly, from this scene, I believe they picked the wrong case to put on TV. I know the way the world works, right? Jessica Chambers is white. Oh my God, Jessica Chambers had black male friends, right? Let's put this on TV. I get it. But just understand, there's an Asian woman named Mandy who was murdered in Louisiana. Right, folks, the primary suspect right now is the same Quentin Tellis. Right, now, now let me say this. I'm not going to openly declare innocence or guilt before someone is convicted, right? I do believe that everyone is entitled to a fair trial, right? Tell us hasn't been convicted of the Louisiana murder, right? He's gonna be tried for it, absent a plea. But what I want you to do, fellow crime buff, is I want you to look at the phone and ATM records from the Mandy murder. What I want you to do is to look at AT&T's tracking of TELUS in that Mandy murder case. What I want you to do is to look at the statements of the witness who claims that Tellus gave them a Chase debit card to use with instructions in that Mandy murder case. What I want you to do, too, is to look at the film footage from the ATM camera. Just research all this online. That catches Tellus making ATM withdrawals himself in that Mandy murder case. Right, they're pulling the punch right now on the unspeakable crime Jessica Chambers television show. They have to do so in part for legal reasons because Tellus hasn't been convicted of this Louisiana murder. Right? He's the prime suspect. But just understand, the people who they are talking to in Telus's family, who are talking about how this guy is a great member of the community, he's a great friend, he's caring, he's lovable. Right? He was friends with Jessica Chambers. Why would he ever want to hurt her? Right? Those people are people, quite frankly, that can be found in almost every major murder case involving a psychopath. Sometimes the family is the last to know. Sometimes the psycho, like Dennis Rader, has these bondage and discipline fantasies. Right? Has a secret trove of 
photographs and keeps trophies from victims and the people living with him don't know, right? They don't know. Because the psycho has these private fantasies, but he also has the common sense to have a public persona to work on and develop the public persona. In my opinion, they're not feeling emotions like the rest of us, right? An actor can go try out for a movie. Then after the tryout, the actor will go back to living in Sherman Oaks or West Hollywood or uh, Santa Monica or wherever, right? If it's in Southern California. And the actor will know, okay, for this audition, I was playing Jack the Ripper. Now that I've taken off the makeup and left the set, I'm going back home to my wife and kids. And I'm myself, right? What happens when you're a serial killer and the role play is reversed? You're Dennis Rader and you have fatalistic bondage and discipline fantasies. You're lacking in empathy. But every day, you're really at an audition. You're pretending to be a caring father. Raider had two kids. You're pretending to be a caring parishioner. You're pretending to be a caring husband. Right? Gary Ridgway, he's married. Right? He's with his wife. That's not enough. He has to go out and kill other women. Then when he comes back home, he's the docile, loving husband. His wife doesn't suspect anything. Ted Bundy's girlfriend's interesting. Did you know that Ted Bundy's girlfriend actually contacts police? Right? There's a drawing of Ted Bundy. That's in the news, right? Ted Bundy famously goes by a lake and, you know, abducts people, pretends to be hurt. The women leave with him. They never come back. Bundy, of course, identifies himself as Ted. His girlfriend actually sees the police sketch, contacts police. She's been wondering why her boyfriend has all these odd items in his vehicle. Guess what, folks? She stays with Ted. In other words, these psychopaths know how to convincingly tell people they're involved with. I can't say people they love because I'm not sure a psychopath is capable of love. The people they're involved with. A guy like Ted Bundy was able to reassure his girlfriend, that he wasn't the guy in the drawing. When, of course, he was. When, of course, she saw things like tape and stuff like that that she knew the killer had to have. Right? So here, the family members who earnestly are vouching for Quentin Tellus, folks, they don't know him. The Mandy murder, the person tortures her, takes out a knife and does short stab wounds. The authorities believe it's to get her ATM card and PIN information. Right? Understand, sometimes when you see a murder victim and you see several short stab wounds, that's worse than one big stab wound. Because that indicates that the killer wanted to torture the victim over time. Wanted the victim to have fear. Wanted the victim to understand that she or he was about to get killed if they didn't play ball. Right? Understand. 
The evidence in the Mandy case, in my opinion, is overwhelming. So as you watch the Jessica Chambers case, separate case, right, separate case, as you watch the Jessica Chambers case, I just want you to always ask yourself, I don't care who the person is from Telus's family, right? They could identify the person as his mother, as his sister, as his neighbor, as his girlfriend. Telus gets married after this chamber situation, could even be his wife, right? What you need to ask yourself is simply, how well does this person really know Tell us, right? We know Jeffrey Dahmer's neighbors had no idea he was homicidal. We know Dennis Rader's wife was so caught off guard by the fact that Rader was the BTK killer that she immediately divorced him when it came out, immediately. Right? If they didn't know, why do we in society assume that Telus' family know who he really is? Understand, his DNA is at the crime scene. The best piece of evidence for him, the absolute best, is the fact that she identifies someone else as the murderer shortly before she herself dies. That's the best evidence for him. Right? The million dollar question here is whether anyone really knows this guy. Is this guy a raving psychopath who, even after being under suspicion for burning a woman to death, would be involved in another murder in another state involving torture with cell phone records and videos of him using the victim's credit card or excuse me, ATM card. Anyway, that's how I see it. We'll see how this plays out. As I said before, Tellus has not been convicted of any murder, right? He just happens to be the prime suspect in two different murder cases, right? This is a guy apparently who is a bit of a Lothario, comes across as sweet and caring to people who have known him for years. My question to you is whether that is compelling evidence of innocence or whether that's actually evidence of this guy perhaps having the same kind of traits that Ted Bundy, Gary Ridgway, and Dennis Rader had. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video, even if you're someone who wants to say, I was a neighbor of Tellus. I go to church with Tellus. I'm an acquaintance of Tellus. And he's just not the kind of person who would do something this depraved. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.